Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can analyze Likert scale items using binary logistic regression to test the extent to which these variables predict any positive or negative change in the dependent dichotomous variable, which is in this case the success rate. Like uh, here, this is like the dummy coded in the sense that we have zero for fail and one for pass. And these are Likert scale items of motivation that range from strongly disagree to strongly agree. So we need to test the impact of these variables of motivation on the success rate of students. To do this, we need to test some assumptions like uh, collinearity, like the so-called outliers, etc. So these assumptions need to be tested beforehand. Moreover, we can run the analysis on separate Likert scale items like this to give us an exact image or a composite score like this after testing the reliability, normality, and even computing the overall mean score of the motivation scale. Let's assume that the assumptions are tests and let's run the analysis and interpret it. To run the analysis, we go to analyze and then we go to regression and then binary logistic regression. Click on it and I need to move the motivation or Likert scale items for this, uh, they are considered categorical variables because they are considered as groups. And we move them to the covariate box and let's move the dichotomous dependent variable to the dependent group. And then uh, from here, we just need to go to categorical and move all the categorical independent variables here. And let's take as reference category strongly disagree as first and click change and it will change them automatically. Uh, this depends on how the Likert scale is coded, like one strongly disagree and five or seven strongly agree. Let's click continue, go to options, and for options I'm going to choose uh, classification plots, the Hosmer and Limshow goodness of fit test, and I can choose the confidence interval for the odds ratio or the x bit. And after this, I can uh, just have this included, include constant in the model for the sake of comparison. Click continue. I think that's it for the time being. I don't need to do any other things. Uh, only if I want to test the uh, assumptions of uh, outliers by using Cox or leverage values and uh, other values. So they are in save. This means that new variables will be created at the end of the questionnaire. So let's click continue and click OK and wait for the output. Here it is. As you can see, this is the first table. Like So the regression model is divided into two tables or two uh, parts. Here we have the equation uh, without the independent variables. And this one, we have the equation with the dependent variables or rather the independent variables included in the equation. And this first one or block zero, this means without the independent variables. It means that it only has the dependent variable. So we have the dependent variable coded as zero fail and one pass. And these are the categorical variables along with their values or labels. And this is beginning block number zero. And it, uh, you can see that uh, there is 50% that block zero can predict. Uh, so this prediction power, we're going to look at it later. And then let's compare this with the some assumptions first, like the omnibus tests of the model coefficient. So there is a statistically significant uh, prediction power of the model that contains the motivation and the success rate or failure rate of the students, since the p-value is statistically significant or less than 0 0.05. For the model summary, according to the pseudo R square or the Nagelkirk R square, along with the Cox and Snell R square, so there is between 40% to 90% of the variability in the success or failure or the dependent variable is caused by the independent variables of motivation or different aspects of motivation. 
And this is uh, not statistically significant, and this is for the Hosmer and Limb show test. So if it's not statistically significant, it's good. And this is the Hosmer and Limb show test. To go to the report, we can say binary logistic regression was used to assess whether some factors like motivation were associated with the likelihood, the likelihood of succeeding or uh, failing exams. The assumption of multicollinearity was met, so this was uh, this should have been tested using regression and the VIF test. I can even include another video on how to do it. Uh, for the according to the omnibus test for the dependent variable, the full model has significant prediction performance. Yeah, so I can just put the the chi square value. So I take it from here. Uh, this is like the omnibus test for the second block, like block one. So it has a significant value. This is the chi-square value, degrees of freedom, etc. And the sec. Then uh, for the validity of the model, the null hypothesis is rejected. So the null hypothesis assumes that the, the model does not fit the data. So it's rejected. Adding the independent variables like motivation to the model has uh, so here has not significantly increased the ability to predict, but it can increase or statistically significantly increase the ability to predict the decision by, by the respondents or the or the, the outcome of the respondents of success and failure depending on motivation. So how do we know that adding the independent variables has increased the probability of uh, prediction? So let's classify, or rather, let's, let's compare the first classification table in the null model and see its overall percentage. It's 50%.6. And for the classification table, so this is without the uh, Lockhart scale items added uh, of motivation. And this one is with the uh, Lockhart scale items added for the motivation. So there is an increase in the predicted or the predictive power from, let's say, uh, fifty percent to sixty-two uh, percent, like it's plus uh, twelve percent or so of uh, this increase. So this means that motivation has a predictive power on the success or failure of the students. We'll go on with the analysis or the report. So we can say the pseudo R square or the Nagelkirk R square measures the variability in the dependent variable as explained by the model fit. So according uh, to field 2013, this is a good reference for statistics. According to the model summary table for the dependent variable, the model explained between so and so and so and so, like the Cox and Snail R square and the Nagelkirk R square of the variance in the dependent variable. So like this is a range. From where did we get this range? We go back to the output and we go to the model summary and you can see the Cox uh, and Snail R square that is 40% uh, percent, and the Nagelkirk R square that is 90% percent, uh, or 19%, percent, 14 and 19 rather. So here we have this, uh, the, these values put here and this continue. So the higher the Nagelkirk R square, the better is the model. And the hosmer lump show test shows model fitness when it's not statistically significant according to Phil. So let's see the Hosmer and Lim show test. So this one, so it's statistically, it is statistically not significant, which is what we would like to have. Uh, otherwise, the model may not fit the data. So it's the reverse of the uh, other two tests, like the omnibus tests and even the other tests that we are going to see. Uh, what else? Now, this is the important table. Like here, we have the variables in the equation the beta, the standard error, the wall test, degrees of freedom, the p value, the odds ratio, the lower and upper confidence intervals that should not cross zero so that the model can be significant. Uh, okay, uh, here we have motivation uh, that ranges from strongly agree, coded as one, to strongly or rather strongly disagree coded as one and strongly agree coded as uh, six. Okay, so we have these values or these codes are attached to the uh, Likert scale. And depending on the levels of agreement, we have the beta or the B, uh, the coefficient uh, has a higher values or negative values. And the odds ratio again changes to see which, which of these variables let's say uh, which of these motivation factors 
exactly predict a statistically significant impact on the success or failure of students, we can detect motivation number four. This means that most uh, respondents can either be motivated or neutral with regard to this item. We need to go back to the questionnaire to see what this item is exactly uh, like. And then we can check. So this is like the only statistically significant one and two and motivation to like strongly. So we have strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, etc. So these are the items that uh, strongly predict a positive impact of according to the odds ratio to go back to the odds ratio. We have a 5.05 times change in the success or failure or rather the success of the students is caused by motivation item number four and these disagreement with this motivation item number four. So this is how we can uh, interpret the this output. We talked about the classification table. I already told you about it. So it classified here 62% of cases. This is a value that needs to be altered. So this is like uh, how we can report binary logistic regression. We can include the IV, the, uh, the different motivation factors, the beta or the, the standard errors, the lower and upper confidence intervals, along with the odds ratio and the p-value. And these are like, uh, this is the interpretation depending on the odds ratio. Uh, so the odds ratio, this one, and the xp. So depending on, on it, we can tell that if the, the beta uh, is greater than one, the subjects in the category have higher odds of success than the subjects in the reference category. If it's lesser than one, this means that the subjects in the, 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 the target category has lower odds of success than the subjects in the reference category determined earlier. And if the value is equal to one, the subjects in the category have the same odds of success than the other subjects, so there is no difference. And the p-value can tell you exactly whether that difference is statistically significant or that predictive power is statistically significant or not statistically significant. Uh, that's all for the time being. For further references, I advise you to check Palin 2005 Space Survival gu uh, Guide. And we have also field 2013 uh, discovering statistics using IBM SPSS. These are the two recommended uh, books. Uh, till then, we, I see you in another tutorial. If you have questions or remarks, do not hesitate to post them below or contact me via one of my social media. And see you soon. Bye for now.